This is an A-level IB biology video about homeostasis. We'll look at the definition of homeostasis and some examples, as well as the difference between positive and negative feedback. So the definition of homeostasis is that it's the maintenance of a constant internal environment. And if we look more closely at what that internal environment consists of, well, it's tissue fluid which bathes our cells, supplying nutrients and removing wastes. Now let's list some examples of homeostasis. So what sorts of things do we need to control? That would be body temperature, blood glucose levels and water content. So if we give the formal names of these things, Body temperature control is known as thermoregulation, therm meaning to do with temperature, and control of water content is known as osmoregulation. Osmo, you might have heard of osmosis, also means to do with water. Now we need to consider the importance of homeostasis, so why is it so important? Let's first of all consider enzymes, which remember are very sensitive to both pH and temperature. And we know that if we see large fluctuations, particularly in temperature, we see the denaturation of enzymes, which stops them effectively catalyzing reactions that happen within our bodies. And remember that denaturation involves the enzyme's active site changing shape and configuration. So we've looked at enzymes, and in fact that includes other proteins as well, if we consider now the water potential of the blood and body tissues, if the water potential rises too high, remember this is the symbol for water potential, then we know that animal cells can burst. And specifically, if we look at red blood cells, when they burst, this is known as hemolysis. And why is that? Because water enters the cells from an area of high water potential to an area of lower water potential. Equally, if the water potential is too low in the surrounding blood and tissue cells, we know that the animal cells become flaccid and that's due to water moving from the area of high water potential in the animal cell to an area of low water potential in, in the surrounding blood. So tight control of blood glucose here is essential because that will affect the water potential of the blood and tissue fluid. If we look at the importance of homeostasis now concerning temperature control, so thermoregulation. So animals that can control their internal temperature are more likely to survive if and when there are fluctuations to their external environment. And that therefore makes us understand how mammals are able to survive. So in terms of the control mechanisms which enable that internal environment to be restored, first of all, you need an optimum point, the point where the system works best. You need a receptor which can detect the change. You need a coordinator receives information from the receptors and decides upon the best response. You need an effector which brings about the response and lastly and crucially you need a feedback mechanism. And we're now going to consider the feedback mechanism in greater detail by looking both at positive feedback and negative feedback. Now you'll find that most systems have negative feedback. And so really what that means is when a change is made to that external environment, systems within the body will oppose that change. Now a key example of negative feedback is the control of blood glucose. So for example, you eat, blood glucose levels rise, changes occur within the body, which lead to a decrease in blood glucose. 
and that therefore is an example of negative feedback and I'll talk about that in a lot more detail in another video. Positive feedback is rarer. This is when a change is made by the environment and a response is brought about which reinforces that change. So notice we have a reinforcement of that change with positive feedback and with negative feedback we see an opposition in the original change. A good example of positive feedback is milk production in females. So the baby feeds and what that actually does is encourage the breast to produce more milk, which is obviously a good thing to ensure that there's a continual supply of milk to the baby.